as the nation, and indeed people across the world, mourn the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, the people of the Isle of Man will have particularly fond memories of her visits here over her long 70-year reign. For over 150 years, British monarchs have been visiting their little crown dependency in the Irish Sea. The first to come was Queen Victoria and her Prince Consort, Albert. Famously, Her Majesty decided to stay on the royal yacht anchored in Ramsey Bay. But Prince Albert came ashore and was charmed by what he saw and the rousing welcome he received. The Albert Tower was later built to commemorate the place from where he admired the view over Ramsey and the North. The first British monarch to actually set foot on the island was their son, King Edward VII, with his queen, Alexandra. They landed at Ramsey, visited Bishop's Court, posed for a photo at Peel Castle, took tea at Cronkbourne with Speaker Moore, and returned to Ramsey on an electric tram amongst huge and enthusiastic crowds. Since that time, George V and Queen Mary and George VI and Queen Elizabeth have all visited, but by far the most regular visitor has been Queen Elizabeth II. Although there was national mourning for the death of her father, King George VI, it was with great jubilation that her accession to the throne was greeted in February 1952. As the proclamation of her accession was read out across Britain, a special ceremony on Tinwald Hill was held for the Manx people. Just three years later, in August of 1955, the Queen paid her first visit to the island, sailing into Douglas Bay on the Royal Yacht Britannia. From the Royal Yacht Britannia, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh disembark at Douglas Harbour for their tour of the Isle of Man. The Queen is welcomed by the island's Lieutenant Governor, Sir Ambrose Dundas, who introduces Lady Dundas and their daughter. From the harbour, the royal route is along Douglas Promenade, where islanders and holidaymakers cheer the Queen on her way. The visit was widely covered and more beautifully clipped commentary described the Queen's historic visit to the Tinwell Chamber. In the Tinwell Chamber, members of the oldest parliament in Her Majesty's realm presented a scroll commemorating the occasion. Democratic government flourished here while England still had the feudal system. Castletown was visited next. Here, too, the town's important people were presented. There was one pleasing variation of the routine on these occasions, for not only did the Queen receive a bouquet, there was a buttonhole for the Duke. Among her subjects, whom the Queen met here, was a blind scoutmaster. Even ancient clocks must record the passing of time, so the town of Peel now called upon the royal attention. A fishing boat skipper, Ned Kane, was presented. Then the fisher girls, who have a hand in the preparation of Isle of Man kippers, which hereabouts, they say, are the best of all. Ramsay lay ahead of the Queen and Duke before they returned to Douglas, from which the royal yacht took them to Scotland. It was a rare moment as the Queen presided over a sitting of Tinwald in its Douglas chamber. She was quoted in the Mona's Herald as being particularly proud to preside over the oldest parliament in all of the countries of which she was queen. Meanwhile, the crew of the Royal Yacht Britannia were dealing with a delivery of 300 pairs of Manx kippers, which were a well-intentioned gift from the people of the island. The Queen's second visit came in 1972 this time, she and the Duke of Edinburgh were accompanied by Princess Anne, Prince Andrew and Lord Mountbatten. They rode on a horse tram, visited Ramsey and Castletown, though there seems to have been a security scare. According to the Isle of Man Courier, the newspaper was run by a Mr Crejean, who said he was going to stop the Queen entering Castle Russian because it was against the law for any monarch to enter the home of a Manx monarch. The police never found which Mr Crejean it was, and there was no incident. Two hundred locals were guests at a reception that night on the Britannia. 
The Queen actually had a rather more personal connection to the island than her position as monarch. Because, for a period, her aunt actually lived on the island. The Queen's mother, also Queen Elizabeth, had a sister called the Lady Rose Bowes Lyon, and she was married to the governor of the island, the Earl Granville, who was here during the Second World War. No doubt this family relationship played a large part in persuading George VI and Queen Elizabeth to make the Isle of Man their first official visit at the end of the war in July 1945, where they presided over Tinwald and toured the island, visiting, amongst other places, Castle Russian. The ancient home of the kings of man. The last was Magnus. It was the Lady Rose, the Countess Granville, who created the Rose Garden at Government House, where this picture of the two sisters was taken. In subsequent years, the Queen would often ask officials from the island if her aunt's Rose Garden was still being looked after at Government House. Perhaps the Queen's visit in 1979 was the most memorable. The island was celebrating a thousand years of its parliamentary system. Tinwald, and the Queen came to preside over the outdoor sitting at St John's on July the 5th. It was literally a flying visit, no Britannia this time, as she and the Duke of Edinburgh arrived on a Queen's flight. There was great pomp and ceremony. Gun salutes announced the arrival of the Royal Party at St John's, and they arrived in a horse-drawn carriage. The Queen conducted the ceremony just as her Lieutenant Governor would have done in her absence. She took the Royal Salute, inspected the Guard of Honour, laid a wreath, and after the church service was preceded by the Manx Sword of State to Tinwald Hill. Here, she required the Deemsters to proclaim the laws. I exhort you to proclaim to the people in ancient form such laws as have been enacted during the past year and which have received our royal assent. <laughs> After the ceremony, she captioned the acts that had been promulgated, signing them into law in St John's Chapel, and then drew the proceedings to a close. Mr Speaker and members of the Keys, that concludes the business of the court. The court will now stand adjourned to Tuesday the 10th of July 1979 at 10.30am in Douglas. The council will now retire and members of the House of Keys will remain to transact such business as may be brought before them. The Royal Party left for a lunch at Government House, but were in Peel in the afternoon, where the Queen opened the new secondary school named after her. After a display of Manx dancing, she and the Duke returned to the airport and were bid farewell by the island's leading dignitaries, including the Governor and his wife, Sir John and Lady Paul. The appointing of the island's governors is one of the many constitutional duties a British monarch has in relation to the island. During her long reign, the Queen appointed some 13 governors, starting with Sir Ambrose Dundas just after her accession to the throne in 1952. Even though the selection of the governors is now undertaken by a panel of Manx officials, the choice still has to be finally approved by the Sovereign. At the governor's swearing in, the confirmation of the appointment comes in the form of a royal warrant, read out at the ceremony by the Chief Secretary. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of our other realms and territories, Queen. Before the new governor takes the oath of allegiance to the crown. I, John Gordon Lorimer, do swear by almighty God that I will be faithful 
and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors. So help me God. The Attorney General and the Deemsters are all Crown appointments, and the island's bishop is also appointed directly by the Sovereign by letters patent. The Sovereign also issues letters patent which authorise other members of the royal family to preside on her behalf over the Tinwell ceremony. Princess Margaret, Prince Edward and Prince Charles have all undertaken that duty. A special warrant from the Queen was presented to Tinwald in 1997 when the island's new coat of arms was officially endorsed and is now used throughout government. And of course, as head of state, the Sovereign is ultimately responsible for the awarding of honours. The Queen's visit in 1989 was again from Britannia as the royal family were on their way to Scotland for their annual stay at Balmoral. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh came to the breakwater in the Royal Barge and were officially welcomed by the Governor, Sir Lawrence New and Lady New. The Queen's main engagement on this short visit was to open the new £1.3 million extension to the Manx Museum. She unveiled a plaque in the new lecture theatre and was shown some of the museum's priceless exhibits, including the pagan lady's necklace found in a grave in Peel Castle. Meanwhile, the Duke was also unveiling a plaque down at Pulrose Power Station, where a multi-million pound extension had just been completed. It seems he was a little surprised when there wasn't an accompanying flash when he pulled the cord. There was a magnificent lunch at Government House for 82 guests, followed by a visit to the Royal Manx Show, where the Queen saw the Manx locked in sheep and presented the prizes. By the time the visit was finished, the Royal Yacht had sailed round to Douglas and was a blaze of lights that evening as a celebratory fireworks display took place. Queen Elizabeth's last visit to the island took place in 2003. Again, she presided over the annual open-air sitting of Tinwald at St John's. Learned Deemsters, I exhort you to proclaim to the people in ancient form such laws as have been enacted during the past year and which have received the royal assent. Barclays Private Clients International Act 2002, which provides for the transfer... Her Majesty, the Queen, his Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. After processing back to the Chapel of St John's, the Queen captioned the acts that had received royal assent earlier in the year. The couple had lunch at nearby St John's School, where a commemorative plaque was unveiled. The Queen then went on to open the new residential care home at Southlands in Port St Mary. Meanwhile, the Duke was back at Pulrose Power Station, this time to unveil a plaque to a brand new gas-fired station, though he was rather amused that the breeze seemed to be doing the job for him. The couple left on the Queen's flight, and thus came to an end the visits of Queen Elizabeth II to her crown dependency, the Isle of Man. There have been many other royal visits, including numerous by Prince Charles, 
And of course, the next time he visits these shores, it will be as King Charles III, Lord of Man, continuing a long royal tradition. <laughs>